Maraxella cateralis is a fastidious, non-metal, gram-negative, aerobic, oxidase-positive diplococcus that can cause infections of the respiratory system, middle ear, eye, central nervous system, and joints of humans. It causes the infection of the host cell by sticking to the host cell using a trimeric autotransporter adsense. Epidemiology M. cateralis is a human pathogen with an affinity for the human upper respiratory tract. Other primates, such as macaques, might become infected by this bacteria. History M. cateralis was previously placed in a separate genus named Branomella. The rationale for this was that other members of the genus Maraxella are odd shaped and rarely caused infections in humans. However results from DNA hybridization studies and 16 srRNA sequence comparisons were used to justify inclusion of the species Cateralis in the genus Maraxella. As a consequence, the name Maraxella Cateralis is currently preferred for these bacteria. Nevertheless, some in the medical field continue to call these bacteria Branomella Cateralis. Maraxella is named after Victor Marax a Swiss ophthalmologist who first described this genus of bacteria. Cateralis is derived from catar, from the Greek meaning to flow down, describing the profuse discharge from eyes and nose typically associated with severe inflammation in colds. Clinical significance, these bacteria are known to cause otitis media, bronchitis, sinusitis, and laryngitis. Elderly patients and long-term heavy smokers with chronic pulmonary disease should be aware that M. cateralis is associated with bronchial pneumonia, as well as exacerbations of existing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The peak rate of colonization by M. cateralis appears to occur at approximately two years of age, with a striking difference in colonization rates between children and adults. M. cateralis has recently been gaining attention as an emerging human pathogen. It has been identified as an important cause in bronchopulmonary infection, causing infection through pulmonary aspiration in the upper pulmonary tract. Additionally, it causes bacterial pneumonia, especially in adults with a compromised immune system. It has also been known to cause infective exacerbations in adults with chronic lung disease, and it is an important cause in acute sinusitis, maxillary sinusitis, bacteremia, meningitis conjunctivitis, acute purulent irritation of chronic bronchitis, urethritis, septicemia, septic arthritis, as well as acute laryngitis in adults and acute otitis media in children. M. cateralis is an opportunistic pulmonary invader, and causes harm especially in patients who have compromised immune systems or any underlying chronic disease. Equals link with bacteremia equals M. cateralis has also been linked with septic arthritis in conjunction with bacteremia, as shown in a case recorded by Philip Melendez and Royce Johnson in 1991 in the Kern Medical Center in the University of California, Los Angeles. Although there have been cases of bacteremia cased by M. cateralis reported before, this was the first instance in which bacteremia caused by M. cateralis was also associated with septic arthritis. A microbiological evaluation of the patient revealed that M. cateralis was the cause of the disease rather than Neisseria as was previously believed. This was also the second case of M. cateralis causing septic arthritis. Along with its relation to septic arthritis, bacteremia is also caused by M. cateralis infection. However, bacteremia caused by M. cateralis infection can range in severity from a slight fever to lethal sepsis and an associated respiratory tract infection, is usually also identified. In a 1995 case study by John P. A. I. Wanidis and his colleagues of bacteremia infections caused by M. cateralis, there was a 21% mortality rate among patients. However, this may have been due to a lack of knowledge about the bacterium because of its recent recognition as a pathogen. In this same study, an infection of high-grade bacteremia was linked with the development of endocarditis. However, the patients without endocarditis in the case study has been related to the background of each patient, especially the existence of other illnesses and any possible immune impairments they may or may not have. Also, Although bacteremia caused by M. cateralis has been infrequently reported, this may be due to a misdiagnosis or oversight because M. cateralis was only recently identified as an important pathogen. 
Many chronic disease in patients with M. cateralis bacteremia can be linked to the patients with immune defects or respiratory debility. Likewise, respiratory debility in patients with bacteremic pneumonia caused by M. cateralis infection can be linked with increased rates of pharyngeal colonization, enhancement of bacterial adherence to abnormal epithelium, and increased susceptibility of pulmonary parenchyma to infection. Equals antibiotic resistance equals. M. cateralis can be treated with antibiotics, but it is commonly resistant to penicillin, ampicillin, and amoxicillin. Current research priorities involve trying to find a suitable vaccine for this genotypically diverse organism, as well as determining factors involved with virulence, for example complement resistance. Lipoligosaccharide is considered one possible virulence factor. Since the recent recognition of M. cateralis as an important pathogenic microbe, there have been developments for a possible antibiotic. According to a correspondence from T.G. Winston Lee regarding M. cateralis and antibiotics, Winston Lee reported that a fraction of M. cateralis strains seemed to be resistant to ampicillin, which makes ampicillin and amoxicillin inappropriate choices of antibiotic against M. cateralis. Although all strains of M. cateralis were susceptible to cotrimoxazole, erythromycin, sulfadamidin, and tetracycline, all strains of M. cateralis were also resistant to trimethoprim. One of the reasons for the resistance of M. cateralis to ampicillin and trimethoprim is because of the beta-lactamase production, which is resistant to ampicillin. Also, the resistance of M. cateralis to other antibiotics may be attributed to beta-lactamase as well because the use of these antibiotics has triggered an increase in development of beta-lactamase, which resists antibiotics. However, a 1994 study by Mejar Hellman and her colleagues has identified a large protein on the surface of M. cateralis that may serve as a target for protective antibodies. This USPA protein is the first surface-exposed protein on M. cateralis that can be a target for biologically active antibodies, and therefore lead to a vaccination. This protein was also present in all of the strains that Hellman and her colleagues were able to test. The large size of the exposed protein macromolecule makes it similar to Neisseria gonorrhoeae outer membrane protein macromolecular complex, which implies that USPA may be a single polypeptide chain. Another study by Isabel McIver in 1993 determined that active immunization of M. cateralis in the respiratory tract allowed the control of the growth of M. cateralis and led to the development of serum antigens. Also, there was an enhanced ability in the test subjects to clear M. cateralis from their lungs. Likewise, passive immunization of M. cateralis from the mice respiratory tracts also enhanced the MACI Euro unregistered trademark S ability to clear the microbes from their lungs, which means that serum antibodies likely play a large role in the immunization and protection of the respiratory tract. McIver also notes that, Along with outer membrane proteins that are consistent among different strains of M. cateralis, there may also be a sort of subclass specific IgG antibody response to certain outer membrane proteins. Therefore, the outer membrane antigens of M. cateralis also provide a possible vaccine source. Also, there has also been the development of a bactericidal serum antibody in response to the diseases caused by M. cateralis. Equals treatment equals. Treatment options include antibiotic therapy or a so-called watchful waiting approach. The great majority of clinical isolates of this organism produce beta-lactamases and are resistant to penicillin. Resistance to trimethoprim, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, clindamycin, and tetracycline have been reported. It is susceptible to fluorokinolons, most second and third generation cephalosporins, erythromycin, and amoxicillin clavulanate. Equals vaccine development equals, currently, there is no vaccine in the U.S. against Maraxella cateralis infection. Maraxella cateralis is a significant cause of respiratory tract infection against which a vaccine is sought. Several outer membrane proteins are currently under investigation as potential vaccine antigens, including the porin M35. Biochemistry during the first reported case of M. cateralis causing bacteremia that was associated with septic arthritis, the microbe was cultured, 
which revealed much about the morphology of colonies of M. cateralis as well as M. cateralis itself. M. cateralis is a large, kidney-shaped gram-negative diplococcus. It can be cultured on blood and chocolate agar plates after an aerobic incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Cultures of the M. cateralis bacterium revealed gray-white hemispheric colonies about 1 mm in diameter. These colonies were fragile and easy to crumble and appeared to have a waxy surface. The hockey puck test was applied to these M. cateralis colonies. This is a test in which a wooden stick is used to try and push the colonies across the agar plate. The M. cateralis colonies scored positively on this test, which means that the colonies could be slid across the plate. The colonies did not demonstrate hemolysis, and were not able to ferment glucose, sucrose, maltose, and lactose. They were able to produce gnase. Cultures of the M. cateralis tested positive for oxidase and nitrate reduction, which is characteristic of M. cateralis. Many laboratories also perform a butyrate esterase test and a beta-lactamase test. Both tests should be positive and can help to rapidly identify M. cateralis from a culture. The recognition of M. cateralis as a pathogenic bacterium has led to studies for possible antibodies against it, which have led to a wider understanding of the composition of M. cateralis. A study by Mejar Hellman and her colleagues revealed that the outer membrane protein profiles of different strains of M. cateralis are extremely similar to each other. Analyses of these outer membrane protein profiles with monoclonal antibodies revealed that a few proteins with similar molecular masses in the different strains of M. cateralis have cross-reactive epitopes. Their experiments also identified a surface-exposed protein on M. cateralis that has an unusually high molecular mass. There has been a report that an ATK DAR outer membrane protein on M. cateralis is immunogenic and common to all non-capsulated strands of M. cateralis which suggests that it may be used as an antigen for immunization. References